Hey everybody, at BV Matson here. I notice on the Keep On Wrenching channel that there's a lot of people working on their first vintage Japanese motorcycle. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to go through some tools that you're gonna need that are gonna make your life a lot easier as you dive into your first restoration project. I've got a list, so let's dive into it. The absolute first thing that you should get when working on vintage Japanese motorcycles are a set of JIS screwdrivers. Put the Phillips screwdrivers away. You're gonna round out every single one of those screws if you start using a non-JIS screwdriver. And here's why. The JIS bit on the right is almost a right angle inside here. The Phillips is actually more rounded. So when you take a Phillips and you put it into the head of a JIS screw, you're gonna strip it out. You're, you're just going to strip it out. So I would say JIS screwdrivers or bits, number one on the list. Number two, I'm looking for an impact driver. A lot of times things are gonna be stuck and what you want is an impact driver to really do your best to knock things out and get things moving again. You will use this, you will need this. Get yourself an impact driver. The next item on the list, number three, is gonna be a heat gun or maybe even a propane torch. But I found the heat gun to be invaluable. The heat gun is gonna allow you to spray penetrating oil onto parts, nuts and bolts and various items. Heat is your friend. If you run into a sticky spot, something ain't moving, get out the heat gun, heat moves parts. Next on the list, a tool that I find myself constantly reaching for is a rotary tool or a Dremel. You can use this to cut off stripped bolts. You can use it to do some polishing. You can use it for a million things. You can buy little attachments. You can buy different heads. A Dremel is gonna usually get you to where you need to be on things. I find myself reaching for my Dremel all the time. This next one is going to save you hours and hours of heartache using a punch to knock out bearings. What you need to do is go and get yourself a blind bearing puller. This thing is incredible. It's got little mounts on it that you can insert into bearings and actually pull them out rather than tap them out a millis millimeters at a time around and round. Get yourself a blind bearing puller or as some people call it, a slide hammer. Here's an example. You got to get that bearing out. You want to replace that bearing. That slide hammer is going to save you. Simply grab the appropriate attachment, drop that down into your bearing, just like this. You get on the other side, tighten this up, and then here you've got your slide hammer, and that will pull that bearing out. It's such a slick tool. Blew my mind when I found it. It sure beats using a punch trying to knock bearings out from blind spots. That's why they call it a blind bearing puller. I really wish I would have known about the slide hammer or the blind bearing puller a long time ago because my first two bikes, I suffered and suffered trying to knock those out with a punch and you ultimately end up doing more damage than good. Next on the list would be a bearing and race installation kit. This thing has made life so much easier because you can find the little inserts that, mount, that uh, match your bearings or your races and actually drive those in without doing any damage. It's gonna save you a ton of time trying to find the right socket that fits your bearings. This thing is invaluable. Don't wreck your bearings when you're putting them in. Get yourself a bearing and race installation kit. Here's why I love it. I gotta install my races after powder coating. So I'm just gonna go grab the right size attachment, matches right up. Go ahead, hit that with a hammer. And your races are installed clean. They also come in handy when reinstalling your bearings. Makes it so easy. Eventually, you are going to get your bike to a point to where you can try to run it. And in order to run it accurately and get things working right, go and get yourself a set of feeler gauges you can use these to adjust your valves, adjust your points, and do all those little micro adjustments that need to be made in order to make that bike sing. Feeler gauges, next on the list. 
Next on the list, a set of snap ring pliers. I find having a 90 degree and a straight version of snap ring pliers really helps. You're gonna need these to do your forks. You're gonna need these to deal with your rear wheel. There's gonna be a bunch of instances where you're gonna to have to remove snap rings and without the right tool, you're gonna to burn hours, man. They're really, really challenging to get out without the right tool. I will tell you as well, skip the cheapo snap ring pliers that you find at the auto parts store. Uh, they just don't work. Go get yourself a nice sturdy set and you'll have them for the rest of your life. This next one is one of my favorites and I'm always blown away when people don't have a set of these in their toolbox and uh, it's vice grips. Vice grips are an incredible tool for when you've kind of made a mistake already, all right? These things will grab onto rounded bolts. You can grab onto those rounded out or stripped out JIS screws in a lot of cases and really crank down and get the pressure up by, by tightening these things up. Vice grips, man. I don't know how many times I've had these two pairs of vice, or these, this pair of vice grips in my hands on one side and on the other side and just brute force getting those things off. You know, rando things, man. Vice grips. If you don't have vice grips, what the hell's wrong with you? Another thing that's really handy to have is a little test light. You know, when you're working on electrical components, trying to figure out if you got power or not, a simple little test light will let you know when you have power. Kind of along with this one, I would say a multimeter is super, super nice to have. You can test for continuity on wires. You can also test your charging system to make sure that you're getting charging out of that stator. Are you getting 13 and a half volts so you don't break down on the side of the road? Stuff like that, a multimeter and a little test light will do wonders in solving some of those mysteries that are bound to show up. All right, we're getting to the end of the list, at least this list. I look forward to hearing some of the comments of things I missed. Um, all the links to buy these tools to support the Keep On Wrenching channel are down in the description. So go ahead, click around, and if you purchase something, thank you very much, I appreciate the support. Let's get to the last one in this video, and let's go to the old trusty torque wrench. There are lots of items on this bike that as you're getting ready to wrap things up, you got to go through the torque specs. So get yourself a quality torque wrench to make sure that nothing's falling off as you're going down the road. Regardless of the bike you're working on, your manual is going to have all of your torque specs. Be sure to follow those with your torque wrench. So that's it. That's my initial list. Just a quick brainstorm to figure out what tools would make my life easier if this was my first vintage Japanese motorcycle restoration or really any vintage motorcycle. The only thing specific to Japanese motorcycles are those JIS bits. Again, they're number one on the list for a reason. Make sure that you get them. I'd love to hear what I missed, so leave a comment. Let me know what should be added, and maybe I'll do a part two. If you enjoyed the video, go visit that URL down there. Grab yourself or request yourself a free Keep On Wrenching sticker. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do that. And also, don't forget to go and find the Keep On Wrenching community group on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video or live stream.